Hey everybody, great to have you back once again on Yankees Hot Stove. Talking to John Boyd, talking Jake, Jimmy and Jake. And we're going to talk baseball now. And Jack and I get this a lot as the season begins. We'll see people, they'll come up and they'll say, hey, what do you think about the Yankees this year? Now, you could go in about 47 different directions. So I always kind of start them with some players might be bouncing back this year. And Jake, I started with DJ LeMayhew. I mean, had the sports hernia, didn't play to his standards. He's a baseball rat. He's such a good hitter. I think with a big bounce back season, he's a key guy to watch. How about you? DJ was incredible for the Yankees for, for those two seasons. MVP level, top five MVP, both season, something like that. And then he, uh, he clearly wasn't the same guy. And we find out towards the end of the year is injury. Um, so, and it's both ways, too. I mean, how, how many times do you talk to those people on the street and they say, uh, you know, defense, run, whatever it is. I mean, DJ on both sides of the field, when he's right, he's an elite baseball player. So if he gets back to that level, it, it changes the whole lineup because is he back up top or... And, I mean, the top of the lineup's a fun conversation. I don't know if you guys have hashed that out yet, but if DJ LeMahieu's back to the 300 hitting OPS and eights, high eights, nines, like... That changes the whole dynamic of the team. I think when you analyze the 2022 Yankees, and if LeMahieu does what he's supposed to do, if Hicks bounces back, if Torres bounces back, if Gallo can give you more than he gave you last year, it's a lot of ifs. But, John Boy, I'll, I'll throw this out at you. If I were to say the Yankees will have the successful season that they expect to have if this happens, give me a couple of those thises. What are some of the things that have to happen in order for them to be successful this year? Starting pitching holds up, and, and one of Seve, Monty, or Tyone establishes themselves as a, a number two, someone that will save the bullpen when they need to. We can't be relying on just Cole to save the bullpen uh, when, you know, after tough losses, and it can't be all five and fly. So someone needs to step up and grab that spot. I'm not sure which one. Uh, I'm open to all options. <laughs> and then, obviously, I, I think it's uh, just I can't have the same base running as last year. Mm. They went station to station last year and still made the most outs on the base paths in MLB. So I would like to see that. And I, they, they've changed the profile of the base running. They haven't necessarily gotten incredibly faster, but if you look at Donaldson, Rizzo, uh, Kine or Falefa, they all take the extra base way more than Gio and Voigt did uh, last year. So... It's not about speed, but it's just being a little bit more aggressive on the base paths. By the way, just a P.S. to D.J. LeMay here. If you're watching the Yankees game on the Yes app tonight, he let off tonight. He also homered in that game against the Orioles. In the meantime, since we're talking about pitching, Jack and I were talking about this on our last show, Jake. The fact that, do you believe that whatever Nestor Cortez did last year, it's no longer a fluke. Like the, guy, the guy could do it again this year. I hope so. That's the Yankee <laughs> fandom in me. Uh, Nestor, I'll say this. There's some numbers that say it can't happen. And baseball has gone so one direction. So how hard can you throw and then yep. snap that slider? Nestor actually pitches. I know we were talking David Cohn before. Like, David Cohn loves him some Nestor. Like, hey, let's repeat it and let's see. And I'll be all in. Might as well be all in on Nestor. He's fun, the leg kicks and all of it. And maybe it's what baseball's missing a little bit right now. Some location, some pitch mixes and all of that. If Nestor can be that guy again, I mean, what a year. His stat page is nuts. Yeah, he's a lot of fun to watch, and I'm glad you made the Coney comparison. Bob and I do that a lot when we're in the uh, studio here talking about Cortez. He would do great in your Blitzball League. Yeah. I'm confident oh. of that. But I I'm going to give you guys a, 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 this is an open canvas here. Okay. I have a, a okay. free page. It doesn't even have to be Yankees. I want a prediction from both of you for the 2022 season. And don't tell me Mike Trout's going to be <laughs> a candidate for the MVP. I want you to pull something out that's going to cause Bob and I to say, eh, interesting choice there. I have one that's a little bit of an angry, spiteful Yankee fan uh, prediction, and it's a little twist at the Twins because they, they got Correa and, and a lot of Yankees fans want him. He gets traded. <laughs> They're out of the playoffs. Correa's going to opt out. Twins fans get to join him for three months. There's my... Uh, stab at that. Pop that, Jake. That's yeah, a good one. <laughs> that's tough. I mean, I've got one that I know that's going to hurt me. I kind of like the Angels this year. I think the Angels could be a playoff team. Shohei, Trout, Anthony Rendon is so good. We'll see if Syndergaard, what he does for them. I'm ready to be hurt by that one. It seems like the Angels do that every year. I'll give you a little Yankees twist at the end. How about Josh Donaldson is one of the most hated players by Red Sox fans. 
that we've seen in a long time. The fire he plays with, the intensity. He has a couple big games at Fenway where he yeah. rakes, by the way. They're going to hate him, which Yankee fans might enjoy a little bit. Yeah, I think there will be a lot of venom for him. These, these guys, yeah. they stepped up. Those are good predictions, Bob. Don't ask me for one. I'm not ready. All right. So, <laughs> yeah, we, we won't go there yet. But you mentioned the fact that the Yankees didn't sign that big name shortstop. Okay, but do you like what they've done with Connor Falefa, Glaber back at second, Donaldson, Jake, maybe tightening things up at third a little bit, and then DJ bouncing around the infield? Donaldson, I just gushed about, so I'm in on that. Falefa, let's see it. You know, he plays really good defense and he's got speed. That's what a lot of fans were asking for. So let's see it. And you know what the other guy across the corner from Donaldson? Rizzo. Rizzo came over. Yep. We got an interesting sample from him. It, his resume, I think his defense is going to be better than what we saw last year. And how many times did he miss that foul pull? He hits that a couple times this year. I think both corners, I think we could really like what we see there. Talking about MLB rule changes, we thought we had waved goodbye <laughs> to the designated runner, the extra runner, the automatic runner and in extra innings. But Jimmy, he is crawling back into our world. What do you think about that rule? And do you have any ideas of maybe to make it more exciting, more entertaining? I, I'm fine with ending games earlier and not going 16 innings. And the numbers actually suggest that it's something like only 8% of extra inning games reach the 12th inning anyway. They all end in the 10th or 11th majority. So why not let, let us get a clean 10th, a clean 11th, then do whatever you want. And at that point, I'd go full gimmick. I'd go full, let's get the fifth graders on the couches excited, calling their friends saying, you got to put this on. And you get to take your top three hitters and, and just repeat them for the inning and bases loaded and no outs or something like that. I don't think anyone likes the man Fred man on second base. It's not exciting. It turns into a, a sack bunt, sack fly competition, which the Yankees last year finally kind of caved at the end of the season. They're like, yeah. all right, we'll play this how they want us to play it, because they were really bad in extra innings for the first half because they just kept trying to hit home runs, and it's not that game. So I'm fine with something, but I don't like this. I don't think it's exciting. Jake, what about you? I echo a lot of it. I mean, I... It's kind of crazy. I, I said this earlier today. We went to a hockey game. We went to a Rangers game. And, uh, you know, it goes to a shootout. And I think hockey fans traditionally hate that. Baseball, I think we can open up the creativity a little bit. Like, so many games go to extra innings. How crazy do we get? I don't know. Home run derby, that starts getting nuts. The ghost runner or non-ghost runner oh, on call second. Oh, the ghost runner. The real ghost <laughs> runner on second. Uh, it just doesn't feel like the right solution. I, I don't know exactly what it is, but let's get creative. Let's have some fun. Regular season, postseason. Oh, we can't do yeah. season. I do like Jimmy. I like the two clean innings, 10, 11, maybe pop it in the 12th. Yeah. We've talked about that in our shows, too. Let's play a clean 10th and a clean 11th. Let's give these teams that have been out there for nine solid innings a chance to win this without any gimmick. And I do think if you get to the 12th and you start getting hokey, and Joel Sherman wrote a column in the Post where he said something not too dissimilar from you, you get to start your lineup all over again. The baseball purist in me doesn't love that either because then I'll be looking at the box score and the number six hitter might have seven at-bats and the number five hitter might only have six. Maybe that's just me, but anyway, I think we all are in agreement. Let's push that runner back. How about the idea of shifts? Jake, where do you fall on the idea of potentially banning shifts? Something need to happen, right? Like the, the game never adjusted, which baseball has done through the years, but for this, it just didn't. So... We watched some old video foot footage during the quarantine times, and we watched some of the old games, and there's a lot more balls in play, and there's a lot more base running in its action. And defense, balls in play, those are the entertaining ones. Like a uh, mammoth home run, sure, that's a good time, but we've seen a lot of that. When you see the dive and play in the hole and the turn and all of that, it makes it better. You're going to get more base runners, and you're going to see – you know, batting averages are going to go up. I know that's not the end-all, be-all, but it, it helps the final product. So I'm, I'm fine with it. And let defenders be athletes and make the play instead of just yeah. plopping them, here's the ball. I have a campaign slogan that I'm running with called uh, keep, keep, uh, Take ba oh, Let me start okay. again. It's called <laughs> Take Paper Out of Baseball. I don't want to watch an outfielder pull a piece of paper out of his pocket, take 10 steps to the left, and then the ball comes right to him and he catches it. Who are we rooting for there? Who is the audience watching there? Are they watching an uh, incredible athlete react 
and run down and catch a ball? Or are they rooting for a video game scouting mm. predetermined analytics? And I'm not against analytics, but let's let's have the athleticism be what the people in the stands are seeing, not the scouting. And I fully understand if it's legal, do it, because you get the advantage. But that's why it's up to the, the league to say, well, what's better for entertainment here? Because we have world-class athletes and we're taking away their athleticism. You've got to somehow jazz up the game, Jack. I, I agree with a lot of what they said. I disagree, though, actually on the shift idea. I think that teams who have shifted have shown some intelligence and some smarts, and I don't like the idea of pulling the plug on that, but I'm also in agreement with you guys on we need to, we need to up the pace. There needs to be a bigger tempo. And before we go, Bob, I do yeah. think we need to remind Jake and John Boy, you know, you and I are both all all wiffle ball in our backyards. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Our own backyard. So we're, we're up for a blitz ball uh, competition whenever they're ready. Warehouse is open. <laughs> we're there. Well, you know what? Can you supply us at least with a blitz ball so that Jack and I can yes. throw it around in the parking lot? We'll Maybe. get you a whole set. We'll get yeah. you the strike zone, the bat. I'll show you all my grips, and then we'll, we'll Don't put show them the grips. Okay. Don't no grips. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, your, on, some YouTube. of your stuff is on YouTube, and to your credit, Jake, you go oppo like Derek Jeter. You got that inside-out swing. He's also Nestor on the mound. You talked about that earlier. He's yeah. all about stalling and stopping. When I'm at, at the bat against him, <laughs> I just stand still until I see that arm come here, and then, I, and then I'll start paying attention. Saw it every day on Yes Network. Get the hands in, get the <laughs> barrel, shoot it to right. I'm, I'm going to go rogue with one final suggestion. I know you guys have a ton of stuff. You're going to create a ton of content for Yes and the Yes app. If you could assume some alter egos, because people know you as John Boy and Talking Jake, but use your last names, O'Brien and Story Alley. Mm. The most badass cop combo since Starsky and Hutch. <laughs> yes. You know, it's like O'Brien and Story Alley. Two cops who get their man and they live by their own rules. What do you think? You could just maybe for the app? I like it. I think Jake would be uh, the, the cop that is just always messing up. <laughs> <laughs> and then, but then his mess up solved the crime. Right. Oh, okay. Right. So yes. we're finding a solution. Yes. That's fine. Yes. That's, that's what I'm all about. Maxwell Smart or Ex Inspector Gadget. Colombo, but not calling you. Uh, Colombo, but not <laughs> right. putting on the act. <laughs> right. Yes. One button unbuttoned. Yeah. 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 Oh, we got some good stuff coming up on the app. All right, guys. Thanks for joining us. Always great to have you here. I'm sure we'll see you plenty during the season.